So I think you've said it all, Paul, but I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I'm, I'm Liz. Um, yeah, and I'm the head of social practice at Open Eye Gallery. So we're a photography gallery um, in Liverpool, um, although our work, um, we, we say about 30% of what we do happens in the gallery and about 70% happens everywhere else, whether that's in a community setting, whether that's locally, regionally or globally. Um, so we're, we're quite a small gallery, but, but quite a big spread of work. Um, and we're very interested in, in socially engaged ways of working. So how we can co-author stories between communities and photographers together. Um, and yes, I also uh, am the programme leader for the MA Art and Design courses at Salford University. Um, and one of those courses is partnered with Open Eye Gallery and that's our socially engaged photography MA. Um, so that's that's kind of me. Um, but I will share my screen um, because I've agreed to chat to you today um, about a recent exhibition that we've done called um, An Ecology of Care um, as a bit of a case study. Um, so I'll just check you can see that next slide. Yes, did that work? I'm going to go with that. Okay. Um, so I'll tell you a little bit about the programme. So um, an ecology of care is a case study um, and it's examples of projects of socially engaged photography that were used as tools for exploring stories of health and care. So this is an exhibition that we did um, in September um, earlier in the year. So an overview. So an ecology of care brought together a series of socially engaged projects that explored intimate stories of care, relationships and resilience within our community. Um, now the gallery was very aware um, that phrases like care and community have become um, buzzwords, if you like, in recent years, particularly within broader kind of cultural contexts. But the projects included in the exhibition really attempted to highlight what we considered a genuine power of collective discussion and action from those with lived experiences in relation to either the health or social care sector. So the projects that, um, that were included in that was a project called Bound and Frayed, which is a collaboration between a photographer called Ty Devlin and individuals who access the care services and staff of those that work at community integrated care. Another project called Across the Kitchen Table, who is the community, which was a collaboration again between photographer Ty Devlin but with Liverpool Dementia Network Groups and Mersey Care NHS Foundation. And a third project that was called Holding Time, which was a feminist activist project by a photographer called Lisa Cree and breastfeeding mothers um, across England. So I'll go in and kind of talk about each of those individual projects. We also had um, a series of publication projects that existed within the gallery um, in an area that we call the kind of reading room or reading corner. Um, and that was an opportunity for us to show our graduates uh, work from the MA in Social Engaged Photography at the University of Salford. And again, connected to these themes. So there was work by a student called Vilia Zokuti who'd done a collaborative project with people um, who were over 60 and who happened to live alone during the lockdown. Um, to demystify these, uh, the difference between being alone and being lonely. Um, the Mindful Photo Project, which was a postcard series by a student called Joseph Lee, who worked with lots of different participants from those in recovery um, to prisoners or prisoner staff, um, looking at the interconnection between mindfulness and photography as a, as a kind of process for well-being. And a final publication called Amelia Amelia, which again was by photographer Ty Devlin, who'd worked with a carer of someone living with dementia. And the publication acted as a sort of what was called a DIY survival guide for life as a carer of someone um, living with dementia. So I just wanted to pause before I go into the case studies, just to really think about what we mean when we say socially engaged or socially embedded. So for Open Eye Gallery, um, we take that as an approach of practice, so something that exists inherently within all the things that we commission, where the projects that were produced are always made in collaboration with the communities affected that by that particular subject matter. So it's never really a case of a photographer coming in, documenting what they see and leaving, but about embedding those photographers to work collaboratively with that community. In that sense, we call the work co-authored, 
we see it as bringing the expertise of individuals with their own lived experience together with the expertise of the photographer to visualize that. And again, our commissions are always co-commissions with relevant sector partners across health and care from the planning stage right through to the curation of the exhibition and the public events that we might put on. So again, having that idea of that co-authorship that runs throughout um, the duration of a project. And most of the collaborations we do are medium to long term because we understand that it needs time to build trust and to develop those creative ideas. So the first project I want to talk a little bit more about is Bound and Frayed. So Bound and Frayed reflects a year long project between Ty Devlin and a number of staff and people who were supported by the social care charity Community Integrated Care. So together they had been co-authoring images which represented the experience of working in the care sector in some of the most challenging moments during the COVID uh, pandemic. This image on the right here is just one of the examples of the work that was co-produced, um, which was a kind of uh, nod or um, dig, actually, it's probably more appropriate, <laughs> to uh, the UK Health Minister at the time, the Health Secretary, uh, Matt Cat Hancock, who spoke about this idea of, um, right from the start, we've tried to throw a protective ring around our care homes. And so Ty, with the, the staff, um, had tried to reenact this idea of the protective ring but with a sense of irony um, that the care staff felt that very much that wasn't in place from government but actually it was the, the staff themselves that protected them each other um, and the image references how one of the staff members to try and keep everybody safe and because of the number of people that were off at the time with covid and um, she would do the night shifts so she would then sleep in the day on an airbed in the office when everybody else would go to work so it was just a reference to the to the conditions that they were working in but this idea that, that protective ring was very much the staff themselves making that happen here's um another kind of photograph that was produced um, in collaboration between Ty and one of the staff members, Neil. So um, he decided to move into a mobile home uh, and park that outside the care home where he worked for the first 12 weeks of lockdown. And he took that upon himself to do that, to keep both his family and those within the care home he was working safe. And so you can kind of see a repeated um, theme in the way the images are shot in Ty's work. Um, the stories are very much led by the participants, sharing those kind of intimate or powerful moments that happened, these kind of key stories that they wanted to share. And um, that he uses very staged scenery and quite a lot of um, heavy shadows and lighting to really focus in on that main subject person, so that subject matter. So really the focus in that image is Neil or the focus in the first image is um, of Francis in the supermarket in the full PPA. So that idea that the, the spotlight is very much on those people and it's their story. Um, now it wasn't just um, these kind of more dramatic scenes or images of restaging that um, Ty wanted to capture, but also the interaction that happened between um, the people who were living within the care centers, as well as the staff that worked with them. And so whilst I said some images did show more extreme situations, the staff and those living within the care found themselves in, um, there was often a series of imagery that focused more on the importance of friendship that happened through that process. And so there's a series of kind of portraits of a um, person that lived in the residential setting along with the staff member that again shared these kind of moments of, of joy or happiness or laughter or, or just things that came through them kind of having a friendship and resilience through that moment and so they kind of act as a series of powerful portraits that capture an important moment of resilience in society again made during um, equally challenging times so it's worth noticing that when Ty made this work we were still in lockdown and so actually the way he made the work um, had to also adhere to the lockdown restrictions. So these kind of extra layers of, of challenges that he was doing within that environment. And for the staff, the, CAF, the, the care staff to kind of take that project in board, on board uh, during that time as well. So the second project I wanted to share is called Across from the Kitchen Table, What is Community? 
So this project um, was a collaboration again with the photographer Ty Devlin, working in collaboration this time with people um, living with dementia in Liverpool and, um, and in partnership with Mersey Care NHS Foundation Trust. So Ty Devlin um, has actually worked with different dementia groups in um, Merseyside for a number of years, I think since 2016. So this is kind of ongoing collaboration with him. Um, but the aims of this specific project were to challenge the negative assumptions that our dementia is only associated with this idea of loss. It was about raising awareness and demonstrating the importance of maintaining existing relationships and developing new ones following a diagnosis of dementia. And it was also to encourage dementia networks to, um, to support networks to be established across the UK for both patients and those caring. So I think what was really important about this um, is that the work resulted in a series of different things uh, which were installed within the gallery space. So the first was a series of video works which act as these kind of interviews in pairs um, between different members of the network group, or it could be interrelations between family members, a carer, um, or a police officer, or it could be an NHS professional. Just having frank and transparent conversations around the condition or what it means to live with it. But within the videos, and I'll show a, a short clip in a minute, the participants in the work spoke really passionately about the importance of meeting others in the same positions of themselves. So this is peers um, and how that act as a transformal kind of transformational impact that it could have on the quality of their life, regardless of the diagnosis. So within the videos, they highlighted the many benefits um, of coming together um, can offer. They share experiences, perspectives, and also the difficulties of some of the issues around living with dementia. Now, without these experiences, often in groups, many of these individuals would have felt isolated in their experience of living with the disease. And throughout the country, they were aware that support offered post-diagnosis may vary greatly, depending on where you are in the UK. Um, and Liverpool is known for having quite a strong, robust dementia network. And so in a way, they hope that this video would encourage other places across the UK to kind of follow suit and see the value in those networks. Um, so I'll just uh, give me two seconds. I'll just hang out of this one, and I'll just get the video up for you. It's only a two-minute video. I'll just reshare my screen. This just in case it doesn't work, you may need to go back and make sure the sound was shared. But let's see. Okay. The sound kicks in in like 30 seconds, so we will know in 30 seconds. Yeah, Have your friendships changed since you were diagnosed? That's a big question, isn't it? Well, that's, that's with people like and me, because um, you just don't, don't seem to want to know me anymore now. We can't take some children and all that, yeah. But regardless of... Outside of the family. Yeah, yeah. regardless of the family, got no one outside. But obviously, with you and Stan, we have to do outside the family. I found that more of my friends now. It's the same for me. I mean, I used to have loads of friends to do with Liverpool Football Club, yeah. being a fanatical Liverpool fan, fellow walking groups. And once I started to speak about dementia and the effects and so on, people appeared to slowly back away. Now, yeah. I thought I had good friends that I could rely on because that's what friendship's about. I suppose, you know, any, any. It wasn't, and I, I kind of came to the conclusion that people, for some reason, couldn't cope with anything to do with mental health. If it's a physical problem, and Stan, our, our other friend, has said the same thing, he, and he won't mind me saying this, he has a form of cancer. Oh, yeah. And people are all over him with that, but if he mentions dementia, or whatever type of dementia, which is Alzheimer's in his case, they back away. For some reason they can't cope with it no. or anything to do with mental health.
60 minutes rewind. No. We don't want the adverts. There we go. <laughs> I'll just get the uh, main presentation back up. So um, on the image here, you can see there's a couple of links and I'll share the presentation afterwards. But the top link takes you to Ty Devlin's YouTube page. And basically what he's done um, is the video itself is about 40 minutes, but he started to release snippets of the individual conversations on YouTube. So you'll be able to watch each of the kind of paired discussions um, in kind of bite-sized forms. So by discussing the positives of coming together and forming kind of strong positive relationships, the groups hope to raise awareness to initiate conversations in other parts of the country to form these similar groups. As part of this, um, they also produced an activity booklet that was uh, co-produced with a designer called Amrit Handwa that's hoped again to help others in the future and to show the power of people uh, kind of bringing people together. So again, it's worth saying that even like the design of the booklet again was this kind of co-authored process between designer, photographer and the, and the participants themselves. Um, so another interesting thing that we decided to put within the gallery um, was based on um, conversation of like this idea of the social ecology model that was sort of informing the, the ideas behind the work. And um, so you can see here a kind of sculpture on the right hand side that was within the gallery. So the group had acknowledged that many individuals become more isolated with that diagnosis of dementia. But at the same time, new relationships can develop and flourish as people find a kind of shared connection and meaning through their experiences. So the whole project therefore drew on the social ecological model um, originally derived by Yuri Brenner. I'm probably not saying that right, apologies. Um, but to consider the role different relationships with a range of people and systems can have on an individual's well-being and experience of dementia. So the social ecology theory has at its core an acknowledgement that the way we experience a situation can be influenced by more than just our own individual factors and that multiple um, levels or layers of relationships also shape this. So the photographer, NHS partner and the participants themselves um, involved working closely together to adapt this model um, to reflect the narratives created by people living with dementia. So in the gallery space, as I said, you can see here a kind of 3D wooden structure as a, as a sculpture that kind of represented it and a diagram that sat alongside it that kind of visualised these different layers of social interaction. So from individual to family and friends, the services that you um, access, community and broader society. So the third element of the project that was displayed in the exhibition, um, you can see here this kind of massive wall that was taken over with quite an overload of images um, when you first look at it. And here's just a close up of one of the shots. So whilst most people recognise that dementia is associated with changes, um, whether that be in memory um, or a kind of a, a lack or change of awareness, um, there are less people aware of the other types of significant effects it can have on people's day to day functioning and day to day experience of their lives. So Ty again worked closely with the group to try and visualize through photography how um, the condition affected them day to day. So a huge wall of images were produced here, which aimed to kind of take over one of the gallery spaces with this view to highlighting some of these difficulties. So to me and you, some of the images may look strange, um, but the idea is that they're kind of meant to, they're meant to question what you're looking at. Um, and each of the images are slightly distorted in some way and they're all of everyday normal objects. So whether that's um, fried eggs, uh, traffic cones, um, a toothbrush, a dog barking, someone trying to figure out how much change they've got in their hand. So all very day-to-day -day images, but slightly distorted with each distortion being a kind of description of how that individual with the condition said that that's how they interacted or visually felt they sensed, or, or, or sometimes that's literally what they thought they saw when they were looking at that particular object. 
So just really that kind of visual overload of disruption that can happen for people day to day living with dementia. And then the last project that was in the gallery that I wanted to share was a project called Holding Time. Um, so quite different at the under, other end of the spectrum from some of the broader conversations you were talking about earlier, uh, very much the beginning of life. Um, so we were very proud to host a national touring programme in Holding Time, which was by photographic artist Lisa Cray. Um, the work was commissioned by Improving Me, which is an NHS uh, Cheshire and Merseyside kind of women and children's partnership programme. And the project aimed to overturn preconceptions and challenge stereotypes and improve breastfeeding rates in the local area. So local mothers um, in each place where the programme toured were invited to share their experiences in video interviews and participate in writing workshops and a photo shoot with Lisa. So across audio, video, animation, and a series of still images, the mothers discussed breastfeeding in all its complexity, calling into question the barriers that still mean many women who want to breastfeed stop necessarily before they're ready. So throughout 2021, Lisa worked with local mothers, including a day long event of workshops and discussions held here within our gallery. Um, so it was really nice for us to be able to invite her back to then install the final work. And we displayed uh, the work that was made specifically um, with women from Cheshire and, and Merseyside. So they kind of really owned that space the following year when they came back to see it. Um, it tied in with a regional programme called the Baby Week um, that's been included around the area and also includes a kind of audio tour across the city uh, where some of these portraits are not just populated in galleries, but they might be populated in. So one of them is like in the entrance of John Lewis another one's in a cafe. Um, so out in very kind of community and retail spaces. And again, with a QR code, you can click on the QR code in the image and then you can listen to that mother's uh, story and experience of, of her breastfeeding journey. Um, some of them stories are quite. Um, funny almost there's some kind of drama stories of disaster moments that happen some are very intimate um and some are actually incredibly sensitive and have some you know have some um really sad stories as well about uh, about a uh, baby loss um and illness um and trauma so it's a real range of very personal and intimate stories um but the the women felt comfortable enough through that process of engagement with Lisa to to share and kind of own and and feel proud actually to have the photograph of them and, and the children taken together and it's really interesting when we think about ethics around imagery as well um that all the children um because they're clutched onto their mother at the time most are breastfeeding or someone holding them um is that the children's faces are always anonymized so so we're very aware that um, the children don't have that decision at that time about that conversation. It's about the mothers. And um, so it's a very intentional way of, of photographing the, the women and, and their children. And I guess what's really important as well, um, although I'm describing these projects as, uh, well, you're seeing them as final pieces of work now because it was the exhibition where it pulled it all together. Um, I stress that, you know, the the engagement from the process that it took to get to that stage was at least a year, if not 18 months of conversations between the photographer, the community partners, the health partners um, and the, the individuals involved. Um, and it's not just once the show ends that that stops as well. So we try and use the gallery space as, as a space for continued discussion around that. So whenever we're thinking about um, follow on engagement, the public events and programmes that might be run around it whilst the show is on is also very much led by the photographers, artists and those community groups. So whether that's the Singing Mamas Choir who came in and basically took over our entire atrium with their singing for the opening event or here an image on the right, um, we always have what we call a response wall um, that's installed within the gallery space, which asks, which asks the wider public a question around um, what kind of positive care looks like to them 
um, and then people take over that space with their own opinions and, and contributions so again a space to continue that conversation once the, the artwork is already up and then I just wanted to finish um, with this idea of potential impacts now the show only finished uh, recently only came down in the end of October um, but we started to collate some of the wider audience feedback that we've had so far. So I'll just read these last ones out for you just to give a sense of context. Um, so a wonderful exhibition. My sister's got dementia and I've learned so much from open eye. It's helped me and my family an awful lot. I worked as a carer for those with dementia for several years and the Amelia Amelia Guide to Care really resonated with me and moved me. A really beautiful and poignant piece of work. And then this last one in regards to um, Lisa's project. I found the breastfeeding really good, but it made me slightly uncomfortable due to going through that in the 90s when this was quite taboo, but it's something that needs to be discussed more. And then that's me, so I'll stop sharing. Um, but yeah, it was just if anyone had any questions around that or any conversations or comments, um, from any of the projects really, or, or just that broader idea of us trying to create that kind of collaborative story about what, what does care kind of mean um, as an ecology would be most welcome. That's Sorry. bloody brilliant. I think it's fantastic. Uh, what would it take to get you to come to my village? I'd love to do something like that here. It's fabulous. I mean, have you thought about travelling with it? I mean, it seems a pity that it all closes up shop and that's the end of it. You've done so much work and there's so much good to be inspired by that. What about travelling with it in some way? 